Hi, my name is Laurie Wang. I'm a digital marketing strategist and consultant based in London. Previously, I worked for the likes of Google, Meta, and also Ogilvy in my career so far. I'm looking forward to sharing with you all of my insights on how you can leverage Facebook and Instagram advertising to level up your business, to reach more audiences, and create more returns on your online sales and leads. So if you want to level up your Facebook advertising, also Instagram advertising in 2023 and beyond, make sure not to miss out on this training. Hey everybody, welcome to another Big View Workshop. I don't know what you're doing today or what part of the country you're in. Maybe you're in part of the country where it's doing a little bit of this today. <laughs> I don't know if that's your space, but listen, it doesn't matter if it's snowing. It doesn't matter if it's cold. It's going to be hot today because we've got another exciting Big View Workshop for you. Today is what we call, let me see if I can find this. Today is Facebook and Instagram advertising success secrets with our fantastic guest, Lori Wang. We're going to introduce her in just a second. But listen, let me get a few of these comments. Hey, from Toronto, Canada. Hey, Jake Smith. How you doing? Good to see you. Alexis Medina from Roma, Italia. Good to see you. From Dubai, Mehdi. Good to see you this morning or this afternoon or whatever time it is. It's 11 o'clock here on the eastern coast of the United States, where we are. So we're going to jump in in just a second. If you want to get in touch with me, Robert Kennedy the Third RK3, just go to get in touch with rk3.com, and we can connect on all of the socials from that space or from that link right there. Also, if you are in the real estate space and you are a real estate professional, entrepreneur, small business owner, we are running a real estate video storytelling challenge next week, March 7th through 9th. And I'd love to invite you to that because guess what? Big View is going to be one of the resources that we use and share as a part of that challenge. So if you want to get locked into that, you can just go to videostorytellingchallenge.com, videostorytellingchallenge.com and sign up for the video storytelling challenge. So let's jump on in because we've got some fantastic things to go through with you today. How many of you, how many of you have ever done a Facebook ad or thought about doing a Facebook ad? Just type yes in the chat if that's been your story. All right, I see some great, I see uh, Florida beautiful homes. Ah, hello from Florida, love it. Uh, Connie Izquierdo, okay, good, from Chicago. Good morning from New Jersey. All right. If so, do me a favor. Type yes. Thank you. Peggy says I've tried to do a, a Facebook ad. OK, we got a lot of yeses. Uh, D.D. King says not yet. Don't worry. We're going to get you moving today with that. Samuel says, yep, done it. OK, how's it worked for you? How's it worked for you? So I, I've done Facebook ads. I've done Instagram ads. I've done quite a few different things and I've had all sorts of experiences with them. Sometimes it's worked well, sometimes not so much. And I feel like I'm wasting a lot of money spending like $5 per click. <laughs> and that's a lot of money, right? You know what? You don't want to do that. So let's walk through today, not just with Big View, but with Instagram and with Facebook, how to make success at that. So what we're going to do today, I'm going to introduce our guest in just a second, but we've got a special uh, giveaway that the guest is going to be doing today. And here's what that giveaway is going to be. It's going to be two free half hour consultations with our special guest today, who is an ads expert, okay? Facebook, Instagram ads expert. You wanna make sure that your money's being spent well, you wanna have some success with it. You wanna, you wanna lock in and hear what you need to do so that you can get or access those two free half an hour consultations. So let's get into our, our guest information. Oh, we're gonna be taking some of your questions from the audience. So if you've got any questions as the, as we go through this, do me a favor, go ahead and type the letter Q and then add your question after that so that we can quickly identify your questions to be asked during the show. Okay, so let's introduce our guest for today. Our guest today is Lori Wang and she's a digital marketing consultant, trainer, YouTube content creator, Skillshare instructor, public speaker, Woo, she's got a lot of titles, a lot of things that she does. She's busy living in London, the UK. So through her digital marketing and social media training company and Instagram, she helps to inspire people's lives with different experiences and from new perspectives, opening their eyes to the wonder and the vastness of what's possible. She's worked with brands such as IBM, 
Anglo-American, Sage, Google, and more. And she currently creates and shares her knowledge to help others create a lifestyle and a business that can thrive and a business that they love. I would love to welcome to the stage my new friend, Lori Wang. Hey, Lori, how you doing today? Where is she? There you Hi. Go. Boom. How you doing? Love that energy, Robert. Can I steal that intro? <laughs> yes, you can have it. You can take it. I love it. it. I love it. You want a little bit of snow? It's How about that? Let's let's get some snow going. Here you go. I mean, you, oh, I don't know perfect. if you get a lot of that in the UK. <laughs> Is it really cold in New York right now? <laughs> well, I'm not in New York. I'm actually closer to DC. But mm. uh, yeah, yeah, the weather's a little bit colder. It's kind of funky. We were at 75 degrees last week. And then yeah, now we're back down this. to like to 35. So it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, I'm originally from New York, actually, for those of you guys who have said that they're from NYC in the audience there yeah. and uh, moved to London about uh, 14 years ago. So pretty much half a Londoner now. But, you know, I still miss my city very much. It's great to see all the wow, what part, what part of New York did you grow up in? In Queens. So <laughs> Queens. All right. I went to school. I went to high school in Woodside, Queens. I grew up in the Bronx. But oh I went to high gosh. school in, in Woodside. So, yeah. yeah. I know Woodside Austin. very well. Yeah. Queens in the house. Love it. <laughs> Love it. Excellent. Fantastic. Well, listen, I, I know you've got a lot of fantastic information. We're already getting some questions in the chat. People are asking, is Facebook and Instagram better than Google AdSense? We're, <laughs> we're getting some stuff about that already. So people are super interested about the the, the, the ads, Instagram and Facebook that we're going to walk through today. So I'm going to turn it over to you so that you can you can begin to present some wonderful information and as we go along I will we'll answer some of the questions that people have in the chat. All right? So Lori, boom, take it away. Perfect. Let's do this. All right. So let me just get this slide showing here. Here we go. So just a little quick intro about myself. Um, uh, sadly, I'm be dating myself a little bit here as well, but I started in social media and online marketing actually way back when Facebook was still called the Facebook.com. Do any of you guys here remember that period? You know, I certainly do. And back then we had maybe just a couple of social media platforms, you know, in the world really with Twitter and Facebook just popping around. And with any marketing strategy that I used to work on in the early part of my career, back at Ogilvy, you know, a lot of the marketing uh, plans just had like social media tagged on at the end, you know, maybe do a little bit of testing of Facebook ad here, a little bit of testing of Twitter ad there to see what happens. But the majority of that budget was really allocated towards more outdoor home ads and billboard ads and things like that. But fast forward 10 years later, you know, seeing that whole evolution of how the entire online space have completely transformed. And now we have, you know, multiple different social media pro profiles happening at the same time. You have to post content on different places. And really seeing that whole evolution has been fantastic and how much more now the playing field has been levered, right, across all business sizes. But especially for small businesses that are looking to leverage this platform, you can now show your ads as little as $5 per day, for example, on Facebook and start seeing some results from there. Now, I know from the audience, some of you guys here have said, <clears throat> sadly, you haven't really had that much result from Facebook ads. And that's exactly what happened in the early part of my career as well, where <clears throat> I essentially ran, <clears throat> once I get, I essentially ran multiple Facebook ads um, across different audiences and sadly, haven't seen that much result, but I learned so much from that process where then taking a lot of that um, insight and fed that into what I did later on. And then eventually, Facebook ads started working for myself and also for my clients. So in this presentation today, I'm going to share with you some of the huge pitfalls I see that individuals may do in the early part when they start share, uh, doing Facebook ads online and Instagram ads and some of the things that you can avoid the mistakes of um, essentially wasting your budget going forward. And how do you actually track the results from your Facebook ads very early on to know exactly how to optimize everything. And if you want to follow me along um, after this workshop, you can also head to youtube.com forward slash Lori X Wang, which is where you can find all the other useful free content that you can learn from, not only just on Facebook ads, but also on multiple other channels as well that you can leverage to build your online presence. And as always, any questions, feel free to reach out to me after my email at Lori at Lori Wang.com as well. So jumping onto the next slide, I want to kick off with um, a bit of foundation understanding of Facebook ads. 
Now, I know that a lot of you guys in the audience here have mentioned that you haven't run one before. And for those of you who have done it before, I'm guessing it's kind of dipping your toes into the water to see if it actually works for you. But because it wasted maybe a lot of budget initially, you kind of got a bit scared and then start backing off from that. So the first thing I want to mention is that <clears throat> Facebook ads, they do have this policy in place where sometimes you may see your ads being rejected. And let me know in the chat here if you guys have experienced this before with your Facebook ads. You create this amazing ad that you want to get out into the world and then you submit it and all of a sudden reject. And you have to keep on resubmitting and resubmitting back into Facebook. So the one thing I want to mention here is that before you do anything um, in terms of troubleshooting, one of the key areas to check into is the Facebook ads policy. And, you know, sadly, it's not the most sexiest part of Facebook ads, but it is quite crucial to think about, are there anything particular on your ad that perhaps have violated the policy and that you can check into because that policy is constantly changing all the time. Now, another thing is that sometimes, a lot of times, it's actually automated uh, checkers on these Facebook ads. So what you might find is that you can resubmit it back into having a human intervention on their uh, checkings team side and then actually be able to resubmit that ad again and be able to get it approved. So not all is lost. Now, I want to talk about your goals on Facebook ads here because before I talk about anything else with regards to running the ad, creating the ad, the goals is actually one of the most important part. The reason why I say this is that a lot of times, we as business owners, and I myself have definitely fallen into this in the early part of my business, is that you see other people doing these amazing strategies on their, maybe their Facebook advertising, on TikTok, whatever platform that might be. And you think that's a new shiny strategy that you need to try right now because that will probably work for you. And this, uh, unfortunately, if we don't actually have an end goal in mind on what we're driving this ad towards, then ultimately you're running ads for the sake of running ads, but not running ads for the sake of creating a business. So this part is really important to remember is that at the end of the day, think about what it is that you want to accomplish from running this ad and where are you actually driving these audiences, these paid ad audiences towards. So for example here, let's say currently you are in a service-based business like myself. So one of my main goals is obviously one, people, individuals, sign up to my workshop, sign up to my trainings, um, and also other individuals buying my courses the online course that I have, or maybe even going for the one-to-one -one coaching session with me. So these are different goals here. Now, what I want to do then is drive individuals to become leads on my website. And that means essentially that they're submitting their information with me, right? Their email addresses, maybe into my newsletter. Maybe they're submitting a contact me form to get in touch with me to inquire more about my services. So these are the ultimate aims I want to drive them towards. And then in that case, I want them to work backwards from my ads Right. So think about maybe one of my first goals then is to build my email subscribers on my website. Then in that case, what can I actually show in my ads to entice the users to go ahead and, buy, uh, and make that submission of their email addresses? Because nowadays, emails are so personal to ourselves that to, in exchange for an email from someone, that's a lot of trust right, from that audience online. And in this case, I can run a leads ad on Facebook, essentially. So my ultimate goal here is to drive lead generation. And in exchange for that, maybe I can show them a landing page, right, to share my, my email freebie that they can download in exchange for their email address to be added to my database. So you have also your own goals. So think about from your perspective, maybe you're running a content-only website. So let's say, for example, BuzzFeed, right? They're very much a content-only website. Their goal is then just brand awareness to get individuals to consume their content. So in that case, then they're probably running a lot of brand awareness ads into the specific articles, their, their videos, whatever it is that they're actually posting online. And alternatively, the third type of goal probably is something around e-commerce. So let's say you currently sell products on your, on your website. Then you care about the ultimate conversion of people buying that product on the website. So that's another goal there. There are different goals in place. So have those in mind. And sometimes think about the overall path that someone might take from beginning of not knowing about your brand at all to all the way at the end when they actually become a customer or a client. How does that work, right? So one thing I want to mention here, a really great tool, quickly run through this section, is that there's this tool called Business Manager on Facebook ads. The reason why I want to mention this today is because for a lot of small business owners, you're probably very used to just running your ads in your Facebook ads manager. Now, that's a whole entire different area, but Business Manager actually covers the Facebook Ad Manager as its overall ecosystem. And the reason why Facebook 
business manager is so useful because as you're running your business and as you're going to be scaling your business over time, you probably eventually will, you know, require some form of external help to help you with it. So let's say a Facebook ad agency, for example, then you can actually share all the ongoing assets that's in your account. So for example, your pixel, which I'll touch on later, why that's really important to have that installed on your website, you, your overall user list. So let's say your email list that you're uploading to Facebook to show your ads to your email subscribers. So these are all things that you can actually share with the Facebook ad agency or anyone else that's actually looking to help you with that Facebook ad account going forward. It just makes everything really easy to control all from one central dashboard. So this is what the overall ecosystem looked like. From the very top level, you have the business manager. And underneath that, you have your Facebook pages, your Instagram accounts, your catalogs. You currently have an online uh, shopping experience there. All that is underneath your marketing assets. And again, you can, you can control who has access, who doesn't have access to those individual assets. And then underneath that, you have your ad accounts. So again, these are things that people can actually jump into your ad account from another agency to help you run the ads overall and also any custom audiences. So we'll touch on this later on in the presentation, but really custom audiences is the key to how you can continually run ads to the right target audience going forward. And we'll touch on, on that later. So this is where you're going to go and create that business manager. It's just basically facebook.com forward slash create. And if you log into Facebook here using your, your Facebook login, you can then start creating that business manager account straight away. And this is what it looks like. So sadly, you know, probably in about six months time when you're watching this training again, it might have changed because Facebook's platform, like many platforms on social media, constantly changes look and feel. But this is currently what it looks like at the latest stage. And essentially on the left-hand side, you see how all the different users, uh, assets you currently have in that Facebook ad account, and also any other things, let's say Instagram pages, you can actually control who has access, who doesn't within this dashboard. Now, I want to touch on the meta pixel and also conversion API. Both sounds really technical, so don't worry. I'll make everything super easy to understand for you guys. So meta pixel, or it used to be called a Facebook pixel, is essentially a piece of code that you can put onto the header of your website. And what that means is that now going forward, every single person that lands on that website can now be tracked through Facebook ads, which is fantastic. However, there's been some changes with the way that tracking can be done uh, on our browsers because now there are actually lots of ad blockers in place, but also with privacy policies coming into foreplay, what we can do instead is actually also have conversion API installed on our account as well. Now conversion API I'll touch on later, but basically what it does is that it skips through the browser process. It's actually installed at the server level of your website. And what that means is that whoever lands on your website from let's say a Facebook advertising that you ran, will actually now be tracked even if there's an ad blocker in place on your browser, which is really cool. So I recommend having both of these in place on your website if possible, because then that way really kind of helps you make sure you definitely capture all the data needed from your audiences. So Facebook Pixel, there's two ways to install this. You can either do it manually yourself or you go to a partner integration. Let's say you currently have WordPress, which I myself use WordPress. It definitely makes my life a lot easier or Squarespace, or any of these other website builders, you can use a partner integration within Facebook ad platform to get that installed on there. So without really having to touch any code, which I think some of you guys probably are happy about. Um, and another great tool is called the Meta Pixel Helper. I recommend Googling this if you can after the workshop and basically get that installed on your Chrome browser. And what can happen is that now going forward, whenever you get that um, Facebook Pixel installed correctly, you can use the Chrome uh, meta pixel helper to check whether or not it's actually loading correctly. So I'll show you a screenshot later on what that looks like. But essentially, as soon as you load on the website, it will show you that one of the pixels is actually firing off, which was really useful. Now, another one here. Um, so this just shows you some of the interfaces here of how to actually install the pixel on your website. Again, two little options there when you go through the Facebook ad platform, just to familiarize yourself with that. And that's what the code looks like. You just copy that code and put it into the header. Now, I do recommend automatic advanced matching if you can turn that on. The reason for that is because when you later on are actually uploading your email list 
your whole entire email list into Facebook ads and into the ad platform, it can actually link up any individuals currently on your email list to also those users, the exact same user on Facebook. So then your ad will actually be shown to your email list subscribers as well if you want to do that into the future. <clears throat> There's a few reasons why I think this is very useful. Why you want to do that is because at the end of the day, nowadays our open rate for our emails are about 20% at most. And compared to the good old days, I still remember the days when we had email open rates up to 80%, which is the golden days of email marketing. So now going forward, you can actually use Facebook ads to make sure that your offers or things that you sent out to your email list can also be seen by your audiences on Facebook and Instagram as well. And this is actually really cool too. So when you go through the Facebook ad um, pixel helper, uh, the pixel setup, you actually see this thing called event setup. And what that means is that now you can type in your website into this little box in the bottom where it says set up events. And this will actually open the website like this. I'll show you in a minute. So this is a little landing page I created um, using lead pages, one of the tools I really love. And what they can do now is on this website, that event setup tool on the left-hand corner, on the top left-hand corner, you can actually see that you can now uh, track a specific button or an action that individuals are taking on that site without you having to touch any code. So in this case, let's say I want to track anyone that actually clicked on get the guide button there on my landing page. And you can actually just call that as either initiate checkout or lead conversion, whatever you want to call it. And that's now counted as an event, which is trackable event on your Facebook ad. So going forward, if I was to run Facebook ads to go towards this uh, landing page for individuals to download the guide, whoever click on the, that button can now be tracked as a conversion if only count that as, as a conversion as well, which is really useful. Now, this is the conversion API. So I explained earlier that conversion API really is a backup for your Facebook pixel. And what that means is that now you're tracking your Facebook pixel um, just in case anything particularly isn't actually tracked accurately through the ad blockers and things like that in place. <clears throat> we can now use conversion API to make sure we have a second layer. And again, this is mainly due to uh, two different ways. So manually yourself. So sending the instructions to the developer on your website, ideally, it just be easier for you. Or secondly, using partner integration as well. Let's say WordPress and Squarespace. So this is show you what it looks like in the platform itself. So you familiarize yourself when you do go to that option. And essentially here, you can choose the events that you want to track. So there are different types of events. You can use that drop down box. So in this case, I chose e-commerce and retail in this case, but you want to track a few different things that perhaps you want to make sure are counted as particular actions that you want your audiences to take. And then you can see exactly how successful your Facebook has been. So let's say you run your Facebook for a week at a time, and then you see that actually um, 80 of them have actually taken action and adding to cart. Then in this case, how do you then go ahead, retarget those audiences who have added to cart but didn't make the purchase to now go ahead and push them towards making that purchase? And again, you can send instructions off to your developers from there. So this section I want to talk about is conversion tracking. So this is the part where I think a lot of businesses tend to lose out on, on Facebook ads and why I think it's so important. So conversion tracking really is for you to tell when someone lands, let's say in this case, on this landing page, have they actually taken the action I want them to? Did they actually go download the guide and did they actually submit their email addresses to become my email subscriber? So this is where having a tracking in place correctly really will help in the long run because then quickly in all of my Facebook ads, I can see exactly who have taken action and which ad set, right? Which ad set is actually doing really well versus the other ones. And then using more of my budget towards ones that's wor really working well and delete the ones that are not really doing very well for me and wasting my budget. So this is a thank you page that I recommend everyone have in place either for your website or for any landing pages that you create. The reason why I think a thank you page is so important is because you can use this thank you page as a way to track your conversions. I'll explain why. <clears throat> so when you go into Facebook, you can choose the option of creating custom conversions. So write this down, guys, if you currently have notes taking in place. This is a really important part because custom conversion allow you to say, in this case, using my, my pixel, which is, you know, let's say in the case of my text, my test pixel and using all URL traffic on my website, 
I want to track specific pages that are firing off. So individuals are landing on that page and firing off the pixel. In this case, it's my thank you page. So this next slide shows you exactly how to fill it out. So in this case, I, I call it a name so I can track it later on, on, on all the different um, conversions I've set up myself. So in this case, wellness guide download as an example. And then down below, you see the URL there. It says my landing page, um, essentially landing page URL forward slash thank you demo page for conversion. So in this case, this is the URL itself of the thank you page that I want to track individuals who land in there. That means that whoever submitted their information in that first landing page, um, which is this cover one here that you saw earlier. Let me go back a few slides. On, on this page here, whoever clicked on get the guide and actually submitted their email addresses, they landed on this thank you page after. Now, this is a page that I want to track on whoever have actually converted. Because when they landed on this page, that means that they already submitted their information and they became an email subscriber for me. And I want to make sure that in Facebook, I can track that this is a conversion that's actually paid for from my ad. Hopefully that, that makes sense. Let me know in the chat box if you currently are a little bit confused or it doesn't make sense. I can always answer that question. Um, but essentially, this is how you get a conversion set up, a custom conversion set up in Facebook to make sure you can actually track it correctly. And this will so, save you so much money in the long term as a business owner, especially seeing which ad is doing well for you and which one isn't. And once you do that in custom conversions, you should see this listed essentially as a custom conversion, but also showing you the status. Now, initially, when you first set it up, it will show inactive with a gray little circle there under status. But once you have refreshed that thank you page again, so just literally go to your thank you page, reload the page again. In the next um, slide you see here, it should show active with a little green circle there. And that's how you make sure that it's actually running correctly. It's actually firing off for you. And here I want to show you um, really a snapshot of one of the ads that I had ran previously and how I actually organize them in, in a template. I can always just share this uh, spreadsheet with you after if you're free to reach out to me for a template. But essentially what I do is I list a column called campaign type. And then on the right hand side, I, I list another column called audience type, audience description, targeting, et cetera. And what that means is that now I can seg segment my audiences based on how hot or cold they are. Now, cold meaning that they don't know me at all. They never knew about Lori Wan before, but now they're finding out about me for the very, very first time. Now, the warm ones, the ones that I've been in touch with previously, maybe people that came to my website, maybe people that have been on my email list, maybe people that have watched some of my content on my social media profiles. So these are what I call the warm audiences. And in this case, you can segment them and then you can actually then organize all your ad sets to test them against each other to see how it's all working well for you. So for example, there for some of the cold audiences I have, um, I could be targeting, let's say, Marie Folio, Gary V, Social Media Examiner. These are different personas that's currently on Facebook or on Instagram that can target the audience of if I wanted to. And for example, for marketing tools, right? There's HubSpot, Google Analytics, Lead Pages, et cetera. These different marketing tools that they might be using as well. And again, another complementary way to target audiences that way. For the warm audiences, I can actually group all of my warm audiences together. So in this case, my email list audience, my Facebook page fans, my Facebook page itself, and also a really interesting one, by the way, guys, your Instagram profile. Now, anyone that landed on your Instagram profile, you can actually now track them for up to 365 days. So this is really useful because sometimes individuals maybe have come across your profile through someone linking to it, or maybe they have done um, some research looking at hashtags, but they may not have followed you after that. But even just by visiting your profile, you can now actually retarget them on your Facebook and Instagram ads, which is really, really useful. And then lastly but not least, it's another cold audience targeting, but this one is another layer on. And I only use this really whenever I have a really great uh, ad set that's doing very well for that target audience. And this is called lookalike audiences. Now, look like audience is basically me telling Facebook, okay, Facebook, there's a really great ad set here that's running really well for me. Can you now go find me the top 1% matched audiences to this audience here? And Facebook has so much data across all their audiences, billions and billions of users. So essentially, they can easily go out and find the top 1% match in this case. And then you can then instantaneously expand your audience that way and running that ad set to even more people. 
But I only recommend if you do this when you have a really great piece of ad set that's running well for you, generating great conversions in this case. And then you can then go ahead and expand that success further. Now, custom audience creation. This is a really important one too because I find that over time, custom audience has been probably one of my key success factors and secrets really on running Facebook ads. So we, we touched on a little bit earlier on this, but source audiences is where you want to start off with. And these are things that already are currently in your business. Maybe you have currently an email list and currently you have website visitors coming to your website every single day. And remember to use that pixel and use that conversion API to track them as early as you can, because I always say, have them ready in your back pocket, and then you can always use them later on whenever you want to. Uh, video views. So people who maybe have viewed your current videos, either your reels, your Facebook videos, whatever it might be, people who have viewed your videos for a certain amount of time, you want to track them as well. And one thing I like to do in my ads is that I like to track individuals, maybe have watched at least 25% or more of my videos. And that means, you know, nowadays with how we are with such a short attention span across all of our social media channels, if someone actually taking the effort to watch 25% or more of your videos, that means that they're pretty much interested in your brand to learn more about it. And that's actually a nice warm audience to retarget as well. Your Facebook page fans, again, very good uh, existing audience there. And also your Facebook page, page engagements. So in this case, people who actually have engaged previously with your content, um, people who watch your videos on there, who actually left comments, shares and saves and things like that. Instagram page, um, Instagram page engagements. So these are things, for example, people who have actually, you know, again, watch your videos, left a comment on your Instagram page, send you messages in your DMs, whatever that might be, that now counts as an Instagram page engagement too. And lastly, but not least, landing page, right? Any landing page you set up uh, separately for, let's say, email subscribers and things like that can also count too. All right. So, Lori, I just, I just want to pause there because we've got quite a few questions. I want to um, see if we can get a couple of those in here. So somebody was asking earlier about split testing. And they were a little bit confused about how the pixel works with regard to split testing. So if you can talk about that for a few moments. Sure. Yeah. So pixels doesn't actually apply in this case to split testing. So pixels really captures all the audiences that are coming to your online marketing assets, right? In this case, it could be your website um, or your landing pages, wherever you're tracking this traffic, that's count as your overall audience. Now, split testing, I recommend doing that if you can. And how you do this actually in action is, for example, let's say you currently run a campaign on conversions. And let's say in this case, it's for the email subscribers, right? Whoever become an email subscriber, it counts as a conversion. Now, what you can do is on your landing page, perhaps try two different versions of landing pages. One of them maybe have a button that's, let's say, red. Another one has a button that's green. Now, what I always say about this is that in marketing, especially in digital marketing, is that you want to embrace a testing first mentality. And what yeah. that means is that you never know. You might be thinking maybe the red one works better because it's more obvious, but you never really know until you test that with your own audience because every audience is different. Um, every website is different, right? Every personal brand is different. Whatever it might be, you want to make sure you are testing with your own audiences to see what's working and what's not. The data never lies. And that's why split yeah. testing is so important. So great question on that. Fantastic. Uh, somebody else was asking about... Um, fake leads. Sometimes you get the spam bots or just fake. How do you know what's real, what you should pursue, what you should, what data you should really collect with fake leads being a part of the equation? Yeah, sadly, there is that dark side of the online marketing world, which unfortunately do have the fake leads coming through. Um, I mean, unfortunately, my advice on this really is that you want to just continue pushing through on tracking the mm -hmm. right conversions in place so at least that you know for those who have actually converted you can see how much you're paying for them on your facebook ads and then seeing whether or not it's actually worthwhile for you so for example let's say you currently sell a coaching program of a thousand uh, pounds per person whatever that might be a coaching package and let's work backwards so let's say currently for every 10 conversions on your facebook ads one person becomes a coaching client of that thousand uh, dollars coaching package so in this case, then for that 10 leads, 
you don't want to be paying more than a thousand pounds technically for them because then you won't be breaking even but you want to be probably making a bit of profit on that as well anyway and that means yeah. that per lead really you want to be less than a hundred dollars or even more so um, in terms of converting and then you can work backwards see whether or not this lead then is actually worthwhile for you in your face ads are you actually currently spending let's say $90 um, or less in your Facebook lead. If that is, then I would actually continue running that because your conversion rate is within the rate that you, you asked for. But also you're spending within your means, right? To convert that client. Um, and then you can ramp up that ad to create more potential leads to drive that lead cost even lower. So yeah. ultimately- so when you say when you say ninety dollars, are you talking about ninety dollars a week, ninety dollars a month? What's what's the time frame that we're looking at? Yeah, so that'll be per lead basis because let's say you currently okay. for every ten leads that you acquire, that'll be nine hundred dollars, yeah. right? And that's yeah. still within the budget that you have in terms of um, within your 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 cost basis of thousand dollars, right, per coaching client. But what I want to yeah. say here is that obviously you want to make sure that margin is a bit more than that. But what I'm trying to make a point here is that you want to make sure um, you are spending within your means in terms of what you're driving it towards. Is this actually still profitable for you as an ad? And other things, for example, could be a lot cheaper. Is, for example, email subscribers. You could run Facebook ads towards email to, to, to gain that email subscriber over time. And I've seen leads as low as, let's say, 80 cents uh, per email subscriber, which you can achieve. But is that worthwhile for you? Like at the end of the day, what are you doing it for? And also, what are you running it towards to make sure that you are actually using your budget in, in the right places? Love it. Love it. Love it. So I think there's one more question. That is a little bit more advanced. Um, how does the performance and result of the new conversions API compare to the Metapixel as a data source for campaigns? Much more accurate. And the reason for that is like, yeah. as I mentioned earlier, on the browsers itself, nowadays we're getting these ad blockers and people obviously since the iOS update on our iPhones, people can now opt to take out their data, obviously when being tracked. Um, I think from a privacy perspective as individuals, that's very good. But sadly, for advertisers, that means that you have less tracking in place that's accurate. Mm -hmm. And what, if, what I have found in my previous campaigns is that if you do have the conversion API in place, it creates as a safety mechanism really to capture all the data because it's coming from the server side, not on the actual browser itself. And that means that whoever yeah. lands on your website are still being tracked that way. Love it. Love it. So I'm going to pause the questions. I'm going to let you finish up and then we'll, we'll take another break to answer some more questions. Thank you, Robert. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So I want to just show you guys what that looks like as um, sort of a, a UI really within Facebook ads. When you go ahead and create that custom audience here, you can choose your sources on the checkbox here. So either websites, catalog, customer list, which is one that you can do to create that email uh, list submission. So all your existing email subscribers, you can upload it into Facebook using this option and then start tracking them on Facebook ads as well. And underneath that, meta sources. So these are the ones that you can track, for example, video views by clicking that video option there. You can go to lead form to track any leads. Um, Instagram account, that option there is the one where you can choose to say, I want, to, I want to capture all the individuals that landed on my profile, not even followed or engaged, but just landed on your profile within the last 365 days. So really useful there. Now, this is what it looks like when you start creating a custom audience. So in this case, for the website, so what I have here is make sure you choose the right source, which is your existing pixel, an old website visitors there as well, and maybe within the last 180 days. That's the maximum you can do with website visitors. And underneath that, you want to make sure you name it correctly because I would, let's say, create in this case uh, a group called website visitors 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, and 180 days. Only reason why I say this is because for those who landed on your website 30 days ago, they're a lot more warmer than those who landed six months ago. So that's why you want to have different audiences set up so you can actually track them at different stages of that journey. But you still want to keep these audiences as potentials that you can run ads towards. So maybe the ones from 30 days ago is quite small, but the ones from six months ago will be a lot larger. Obviously, you collected more audiences there. So if that is the case, you can use a larger audience to run your ads to. But whatever it might be, have those as an option because it's all free to create anyway. Why not have it in your back pocket to help yourself? And this is what it looks like. And this is what it looks like to upload the email list. So if you currently are in that window, you can then go ahead and just import either from MailChimp, which is another email list marketing software that you can use. They have a free plan, by the way, guys. I think it's about 
um, ten dollars a month or something like that. Really great. Um, that you can then eventually upgrade to. And then they also have another uh, way that you can actually just submit a CSV file with all the email addresses listed, and you can then get that match within Facebook ads as well. So here to show you what that looks like for the Instagram custom audience option, essentially, you know, choosing my source, in this case, in my Instagram profile, I'm Lori Wang, and then 365 days, anyone who visited this professional account's profile. So really useful there to get that tracked. You can also do video engagement audiences. So in this case, it's anyone who watched, maybe let's say in this case, 50% of my video, and also within the last 365 days or any amount of days that you want to track that to be. So another one I want to touch here is that, you know, retargeting audiences. How do we actually now use these custom audiences that we created to retarget individuals on Facebook and also on Instagram? I think retargeting is very, very powerful because essentially nowadays we are very busy individuals. And anyone here who's a parent like myself probably understand this is that I might be scrolling through, let's say, on my social media accounts or on Facebook, whatever it might be. My kid probably pulls me away about half the time. And sometimes I lose track of what I'm doing and I forget about maybe that website I was surfing to buy the product. But what I do get later is an ad telling me that, hey, you forgot something in your cart there. Come back here and make that purchase. Here's another 20% off. It's a really, really useful way to you know, use this as an information to help you track individuals that may be also able to um, essentially be enticed back to buying your product or become one of your potential inquiries as a lead. So for example, you could track things like people who visited your website previously but didn't take action the first time. Maybe you can do some pre-sales, right, by doing some product walkthroughs and showcasing how the product works in the video to retarget those audiences again to entice them to come back. Uh, maybe doing some case studies or testimonials. These are really, really powerful ways to run uh, paid ads on Facebook and Instagram because, again, it's not showing people from how amazing you are from your perspective, but it's about what others are saying about you. It's that social proof. And that always seems to convince people much more um, in terms of conversions. And again, just to showcase you again in terms of that, that spreadsheet, how I use that to make sure that it's actually targeting the right individual audiences in this case and keeping track with everything there. I told you this earlier about lookalike audiences. It's about matching that top 1% or X percent audiences that you want to expand your audience into, the ones that are really working well. But one thing I want to mention here is that I wouldn't go more than 1% initially just because the more bigger of that expansion you do, the more diluted or the less matching in terms of the audience they have versus the one you had originally. So I would just be very careful about that going forward. And this is what it looks like and how you can actually create the look like audiences. So let's say in this case, your visitors over the last 180 days, and you want to choose the top 1% of that audience there and go ahead and create it within Facebook ads platform. And now you have that as another custom audience to, to use as well. So this just briefly touch on some of the conversion ad setups. And this is what the overall structure of the Facebook ads platform looks like. And going forward, the way to think about it in, in the right way. So first of all, you have the campaign objective, which is, let's say, in this case, conversions. It could be video views. It could be driving traffic towards the landing page. Whatever that, that might be, that's your objective there. And underneath that, you have different ad sets. So in this case, it could be, let's say, an audience on personas, which is why I did earlier, you know, for example, the likes of Gary Vee, Social Media Examiner. Or it could be another ad set on particularly just the warm audiences. It could be my email list subscribers, my website visitors, my Instagram profile visitors, whatever that might be, grouped together as a warm audience there. So you can run them as different ad sets that way. And underneath that, you have different versions of the ad. So earlier, there's an individual who asked questions about the uh, split testing. This is where you can actually test different type of ad creatives. So in this, case, in, in this case, different pictures, different videos, or maybe different landing pages that you're running with different button colors. So I, I mentioned earlier as, as an example. But these are different ways that you can actually then test out underneath specific ad sets too. So just showcasing a little bit of example of that um, spreadsheet, which I'm more than happy to share with you guys after. Feel free to re reach out to me as well. Um, I do want to mention here a little bit of about the metrics that we need to track. And 
you know, measuring and data really is key to everything in success on Facebook and Instagram ads. So he, these are things I think really as small business owners or solo entrepreneurs should really think about to track this versus the bigger metrics that we see on the typical Facebook ad platform. So one is unique outbound links. Why I think this is so important? Because at the end of the day, we as businesses, we care about when people leave Facebook from our Facebook ad, are they actually landing on an external page that we are pointing them to? Because ultimately that's where we're driving them towards, right? So you care about how many individuals actually saw you ad and click on the outbound link. So going to the actual page you're driving them to, not just clicking on anywhere in the Facebook ad itself. That doesn't mean anything for us as a business. We want to track where the money really goes. And that's why this is so important. And cost per acquisition. So again, as I mentioned earlier with, with Robert on that question, is that you want to think about how much you're actually paying per lead, per conversion, per sale. And is this actually still making sense versus how much you're making in the back of that? So do the calculations yourself, think about how many individuals come through your business on a regular basis and how many percent of them actually convert into a client or a customer. Then in that case, work backwards. How much are you spending on that ad to make it worthwhile for you to run this ad going forward to make sure you're at least breaking even or making some profit there. And cost per click, uh, cost per click again, very important for those who are looking to do traffic ads, right? Driving traffic towards something. So again, something to track here as well. Unique landing page views, a really important one here, guys, is that you want to think about for those individuals that landed on your landing page or your website, are they actually, did they actually make it there at the end? Or did they actually get distracted and left that site very quickly or didn't even actually load the site when they left Facebook? So this is a really good metric to track. You can actually choose this in the drop down box uh, within the Facebook ads platform to show this as another metric to make sure you are tracking correctly to see whether or not you're actually spending money in the right places. And last but not least is to optimize your Facebook ads. Now, this is the part where I think a lot of people tend to get it wrong is that um, I want you all to put a straight jacket on when you first put your ads live and don't touch it for at least the first 72 hours. The reason why I say this is, is that Facebook's algorithm is actually using the, this period, this three days, three to four days to test against different audiences, to show ads in different places, to learn from that as much as possible. That algorithm is actually at this moment very, very fragile. And you want to make sure not to touch it because when you do, it goes a bit crazy. And what you might see is that what, might, what could have been a really great ad running really well for you, if you touched it in those first few days while it's learning, then it won't be able to spill out the same exact result that you're looking for. So again, have this kind of testing first mentality. When you put those ads live, leave it there for a few days and then come back to check which one is actually underperforming for you. So using the metrics that I mentioned earlier that you can think about whether or not these are actually still within your standard or whether or not your ads are doing well and is it still making sense for you to make profit from it, then take away and delete away the underperforming ones, shifting some of those budget into the ones that are doing really well for you and then basically essentially then scaling those ads over time, maybe even with a bigger audience, right? Using the lookalike audiences I talked about earlier. And if some ads you feel like it's a bit on the fence, you know, it's kind of like maybe it could be doing better in a day or two's time, Give another 24 to 48 hours before you make that judgment call. And also, these are things that I would do on a daily and weekly basis because we as business owners, we tend to just forget, right? You, you set things live, you leave it there, and you come back a month later, you're like, oh my gosh, how did I spend about $1,000 on this ad that didn't do anything for me? So never leave in the background and forget about it. But do go back daily to check the campaigns they're spending correctly. And also any messages and comments coming from the users are seeing your ads. I see this all the time where on, on Instagram and scrolling through and see a sponsor ad and there are lots of people leaving comments about the product or asking questions, but the actual ad owner isn't responding to it. So think about it. These are all potential sales that you could be making or potential clients that you could be talking to. So think about that for a moment and make sure to do go back on a regular basis to respond to them as well, because that's what you're paying for, for your ads, right? And then lastly, let's do a weekly check to make sure overall performance is still doing well for you and make sure to shut down any campaigns that are not performing so you can save those budget over time and use it on where it matters the most. And lastly, I want to mention this point here is that you want to increase your ad spend gradually. And this is actually one of the key mistakes I see is that someone sees an ad doing really, really well and all of a sudden they're like, okay, let's ramp this up, put in as much budget as possible, increase it from like 
five dollars a day to twenty dollars a day straight away. And what that might happen is that now Facebook is flooded with all the budget coming through for you. And then sadly, that means that now it's actually frantically trying to spend all that budget as much as possible. And what that also means is that you might be losing out and that particular great performance that, that you had earlier, because now the, the cost per lead, right, per acquisition or conversion just shot up straight away. So you want to make sure you increase it gradually over time. And just last about here, but not least, is that if your ad's not performing, there are a few things to think about here. If it's a low conversion rate, then make sure to improve the copy or user experience on your landing page, on your website. It could be something there that's broken, for example. If it's really high cost per lead, think about testing some of the new audiences we talked about. Try different creatives like images, new, new images or new videos, and try tweaking your copy on your social media um, ads too. Now, if you want to increase your leads, increase your budget gradually on the ones that are really working well for you. Just make sure that you are optimizing them over time too. So that's all that today. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure to reach out to me after if you have any questions. And here's back to Robert. Awesome. Thank you so much, Lori. I man, that was that was a good bit of information. So let me ask you this question. If I am a brand new business owner, uh, number one, how effective will ads be for me? And number two, how much of this should I begin to do on my own before hiring or finding someone else to help? Great question, Robert. So first of all, I would say by all you guys being here today in the workshop, you now know enough to be dangerous. And what I mean by that mm. is that you do appear, you know, approach any Facebook ad agencies or individual freelancers reaching out to you. You now know enough to question them on whether or not they know their stuff, first of all. Yeah. And secondly, they won't be taking you for a ride. So that, that that's really important here. Self-education is always important before you go out to reach for further help. Uh, secondly, on that first question bit, I do think that, you know, as a new business, you can test out some of these things I talked about in today's presentation uh, by using yeah. a very low budget to start off with. So what I mentioned earlier is that Facebook, amazingly, they allow you to test as little as $5 per day on per ad set. And what that means is that you can then dip your toes in the water, maybe run a bit of an email subscriber campaign first to grow that email list on your website. And a lot of times individuals, so there's a data where over 92% of individuals that land on your website for the very first time may never return. And what you mm -hmm. can do is then using this Facebook ad as a way to really grow that email list over time. And then you can then nurture that audience as you're growing them, right? Also sending out useful information, um, sending them lots of different new offers, things that you're working on. And ultimately, some of those may actually end up to be customers or clients in the long term. That could be a really nice, easy, low cost way to get started. Another great way is that whenever you publish a new piece of content, for some of you guys here who may be doing content regularly on social, yeah. you know what I mean is that initially that visibility is hard. And what you can do is leverage the power of paid ads to get your, your, your amazing content shown for the more people. And that's building you brand awareness as well, which may not always be measurable in terms of conversions, but that brand awareness can be so helpful to build a brand online over time. I love it. I love it. So let's talk just our, our last question here is, especially for those that are new to this, what do you find more successful on ads? Is, is it images or do we need to invest time to do videos? What's the best way to start um, getting eyeballs on our content? That's a great question. So um, sadly, but also true is that we do see individual platforms everywhere pushing out video more than images. Mm -hmm. So I do you know, believe that if you can try to embrace video a little bit more going forward as a business, it would definitely help you. It's just because it's a great way to connect with your audiences authentically. And it doesn't matter what line of business you're currently in, you can use video in a very creative way to do that. However, at the same time, I do think besides ju just video itself, it's also how you represent your brand, your value, your, your narrative. That's also very important on social. Um, a yeah. lot of times people like to do business with people, right? That they actually like, know and trust. And really that's where the Facebook and Instagram platforms come into play is that we have a huge amount of audiences out there to reach that we can reach on these platforms. But also by leveraging ads, you're able to show your narrative, your story to a lot more people than you would be organically yeah. without paying ads. And I think that's a worthwhile price to pay as we're building our brand over time online. And especially if you spend all that time making videos anyway, right? So- yep. 
Yep. So let's let's talk about your giveaway here. So at the beginning, we talked a little bit about uh, two con two coaching calls or two consulting uh, giveaways. You you tell us a little bit about a little about a little bit about how that works and what we need to do. I'm stumbling over my words here because it's so amazing. I can't believe you're giving this away. <laughs> oh, thank you, Robert. Thank you. <laughs> but really, I want to reward the audiences who are taking the time to learn from this workshop today. So if you can share, let's say, either Instagram story, tagging myself, Robert, and also uh, Big View uh, in, in your Instagram or maybe anywhere that you currently share your content online, uh, tag us. And then I will actually pick the winner of two winners, lucky winners, to get two free um, 30 minutes social, uh, social media, but also social media ad strategy session. Depending on what you currently need at the moment, we can talk about that later. I love it. I love it. Listen, you all don't forget to do that. Go to uh, Lori's Instagram. Uh, th that's just been posted in the chat, instagram.com forward slash I am Lori Wang. And you can tag myself. I am Robert Kennedy three. You can tag Big View as well. And Lori's going to pick two lucky winners over the next few days that will get two free half hour consultations with her. So if you loved what she shared today, she's going to give you a little bit more of a breakdown in, in that time customized to you. So don't forget to share a story, tag us so that you can be considered as a part of this. Lori, this has been fan doggone tastic. I appreciate your time hanging out with us today. Thank you for having me, Robert. It's been a lot of fun. All right. Excellent. Listen, you all, this has been another fantastic Big View session. All of the other sessions are here on the Big View channel. If you want to go back and replay this session, just make sure that you subscribe to Big View TV, the Big View TV channel, and you can get not only this fantastic content, but other content that's been shared over the last few months that is really designed to help you not only grow your business, but get the best out of creating visibility for yourself and upping your online presence. So we're going to do this. We're going to leave and I'm going to drink some water and get on out of here, but we'll see y'all next time. Make sure that you hang out with us again soon. Peace. We'll see you. Thank you, everybody. Hey there, storytellers. Thanks for joining me on the session. I'm so pumped that we were connected and I hope you found real value in what was shared. Do me a favor, I wanna continue the journey with you. Head on over to RK3 That's Me. That's right, rk3that's.me. On that page, you'll find all of the different places on the interwebs that you can get connected with me. And there are also some great resources for you to download. Download them because they're designed to help you become better presenters, better communicators, and video storytellers. And that's what we need more of in this world, right? <laughs> Listen, get connected, go to RK3, that's me. I'm RK3, and I hope to see you in my inbox.